So I'm going to address a very common frustration, which is how you can actually do more training when you've already got loads going on. It seems like you've got no other time during the week to do extra training to help you step your game up so that when a pro trial, a, a trial comes around with a pro club, that you're able to compete with these guys um, who are already doing training to a very high level every single day and can commit all of their time to you know, making sure that their body is able to perform to a high level. How can you compete with these guys when you're juggling you know, your job, your family and your team sessions as well? Where do you find the time to do the extra training? So I'm gonna outline three key times during the week that you need to utilize, which will help you overcome this uh, frustration. Um, okay, so it's important to realize that we're not trying to fill up our time, all our time out of the week with training. It's important that we still keep those rest and recovery days because that's when you actually progress from your training. Okay, so um, when you're doing your training, that's providing the stimulus for change and the stress to your body, but it's not actually providing the change itself. The change comes from the nutrition and the rest and recovery that you schedule. It happens during that time. If you don't, uh, if you don't schedule that time, then you're gonna find yourself getting fatigued, overtraining, increasing your risk of injury, and not progressing. Um, and the reason that players who are highly trained, playing at the highest level, can do intense, intense session after intense session, is because their bodies are conditioned to a level where they can recover faster, okay? Which enables them to do a very hard session, and they, they stress the body, and then they recover quicker, and they can just go again um, to a similar level the next day. Whereas lower trained players, they provide the stress and then it takes a little bit longer to recover. So it's, again, really important to schedule that rest and recovery time. And you'll find that the more condition you get, the, the less rest time you need to return to feeling fresh again. Um, so three key times. If you want to work on your speed work, um, a way to be more time efficient with this is to do it before your team training sessions, okay? So um, just if, if you can get to your team sessions 10, 15 minutes early, Right, then that means you don't have to find another period of the week to go out and do some training. Get your team sessions early if you can, 10 to 15 minutes just before. Remember, we're conditioning the nervous system, so we're not looking for muscular fatigue. So we're not only gonna get some high quality speed work in there, because you're already feeling fresh, but it's gonna fire you up for your team session as well. So you're gonna be raring to go as soon as that starts, whereas other players will take a little while to get into it. So that's the first advantage. And that can be done on a completely separate day so if you want to work on maintaining your stamina and gaining a little edge of stamina as well. So do the opposite of stamina. Do it at a time when you're already slightly fatigued. So after team training, you're already warm, you've got your boots on, you're already there, you've got the pitch in front of you. Chuck a few markers down. So make it, don't overwhelm yourself, make it really easy and simple to do this. So there's less, of, less ex excuses and obstacles and reasons to give yourself why you can't do it. A few markers down get five to 10 minutes of stamina work in, and then you go back in, you've still got all those recovery and rest times during the week that you'd normally have. And another one is during match days and also before team sessions, team sessions as well, is your um, mobility work and your flexibility work, mainly focusing on mobility. So this is a great time to do mobility work because if you can do that and then actively go and use the, the range that you've just opened up, um, in like your team warm up and then going into a match as well, then that's gonna have a greater chance of you actually maintaining that new range of movement that you've opened up compared to if you're just doing random mobility sessions throughout the week and then not doing anything after them, your body's just gonna reset. Whereas if you do the mobility work and then actually go and use that new range of motion, okay, you're gonna increase um, the chances of you maintaining that mobility and then you can keep building on that week after week. And you can do this um, just before you go out for your team warm-ups, or you can do this at home before you go to your team, ses um, team training sessions or team matches. Ideally, you do it just before you go out for your warm-up if you've got the space to do that wherever you're playing in your clubhouse, because that's, that's a key time and you're gonna feel great when you go out on the pitch having just done that mobility work. Flexibility work, you probably wanna do that at home a few hours before. Um, basically because if you do your flexibility work, there's been research which shows that um, negatively affects your power output, which is obviously something we don't want to do just before a match. So stick to mobility just right before you're going out to your, your team training sessions. So three key times there to be more time efficient with your training. Um, speed training always needs to be done when you're fresh, so do it at the start of your team uh, training sessions. 
Not only are you gonna, that's a great time to do it because you're feeling fresher. Um, if you did that afterwards, you're already fatigued. The nervous system's fatigued. It's not, a, you're gonna be training and not getting much out of it in terms of speed. So always make sure if you're gonna do it, do it when you're fresh. You're then gonna be raring to go for your session when other players are gonna take a little while to get into it. Stamina, do that after your team training sessions. Again, just five, 10, 15 minutes, high quality work, get it done, and then you can get back in and back into the, the rest and recovery phase. Um, and th this is a way that you can still schedule some extra training in, help build an edge, not risk overtraining, still get that recovery time in there, which is crucial to your uh, progress, and help you bridge that gap and make that step up so that your body is just prepared um, in a better way and also mentally that's going to help you feel more confident because you know you're training smart as well um, so I hope you found some value in this um, video if you did please share it with your teammates and your coaches as well um, again we've got loads of coaching videos on our app so you can download that for free from the app stores just type in match fit conditioning and that'll come up and if you if you like a framework of how to implement this for the whole season help you make that step up um, then click the link in our bio and also I've added it below this video as well and watch the video on that page it outlines the framework which we recommend that you follow and you can design your own or if you'd like help implementing it then you can go on and you can get our help to do that as well if you'd like to um, so thanks very much for your time thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next one